good morning. We come to lift up his holy name. We come to magnify him. We come to glorify him. We come to give him a hallelujah praise. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Act like you like him if you don't. I say act like you like him even if you don't. could go ahead on to read the scripture. Amen. I'm going to read Psalms 100, 1 to 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him in his presence and sing you. Know ye, the Lord is good. It is he that made us. Did nobody make us but the Lord. And not ourselves. We are his people and his sheep and his pastor. Into his gates, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Into his gates with thanksgiving and his course and praise and thanks unto him and bless his name. Come on, let's bless his name. Come on, let's bless his name. We have already entered his gate. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. I say, and his mercy is everlasting. Y'all better act like you know. You better act like you know. And his truth endured to all generations. May the Lord add a reading and a blessing to his word. God bless you. Get up out of my bed one more time. He just keep blessing me over, 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 and over again. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this day that you have made and you have seen fit to let us open our eyes to see one more time. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Father God, we know it wasn't the goodness we have done. We haven't been right all the time. But you look down on us this morning and blessed us with your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father, because you look down on me, a wretch undone. Father God, I know that you are a good God. Father God, come in these services right now and bless in the name of Jesus. Father God, we want you to come in this morning's service and lift up a bow down head. Father God, we know that someone uh, need a lifting up this morning. Someone may have a sad situation. But Father God, we know you can step in and correct that situation and make them a joy. A joy in their lives. Father God, I, I don't want to take too much time but I'm grateful today that uh, you blessed me uh, to come out to your house and worship one more time. Oh, glory, glory, uh, hallelujah. Look down on us this morning, Father. Uh, someone standing in this holy place uh, looking for a blessing this morning. Uh, somebody standing in here this morning. Uh, didn't sleep well last night. Uh, oh Lord, uh, give them peace in their heart right now. Uh, 
morning, giving honor to God, respect to my pastor, to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Once again, it's good to see you all this morning. Let's give it up for our choir and our band on this morning. Let's really give it up for, to them for ushering in the spirit this morning. They did an amazing job. They sound amazing. They look amazing. Let's give it up for them one more time this morning. So I would like to start by welcoming any visitors we have visiting with us today. Any visitors we have visiting with us today and any faces that we haven't seen for a long time. Can you stand up this morning, any visitors? Come on, Gigi, I see you. We ain't seen you in a long time. On behalf of Reverend Williams and First Lady Williams, we would like to welcome you here today to worship with us and let you know if you do not have a church home, you are so welcome here at New Direction. Amen. Let's give it up once again for our visitors. Because it's good to have visitors sometime. Amen. All right. So we are going into a new month. It is June already. Can you believe it is June already? Happy birthday to anybody that is celebrating a birthday in the month of June. We got some June birthdays around here. We got some people celebrating in the month of June. Happy birthday to everybody who is celebrating a birthday in June or an anniversary. Um, and congratulations to all of our graduating class of 2024. Let's give it up to our graduates on this morning. Congratulations to everybody that's going college, going to high school, going to K-5, or wherever you're going, congratulations to you in this month of June. All right. Um, okay, Children's Church is going on this morning. So we have Children's Church this morning for the little ones down in the lower level, uh, ages 2 to 10. So parents, if you want to take your children down to Children's Church, please make sure that you sign them in in the lower level. So we are having Children's Church this morning, okay? All right, get into these announcements. On June 12th and June 26th, the Season Saints Choir, where is our Season Saints Choir at? Let, let, let's see them. Yes. So the choir to you choir members, you're going to have rehearsal here after Bible study on the 12th and the 26th. Amen? Okay, so that's on the 12th and the 26th. Season Saints choir rehearsal will be immediately after Bible study. And if you have any questions or if anybody is interested in joining this amazing choir, you can see KP. Amen? All right. Okay. Fathers. Fathers. Where are fathers at? Fathers at father figures. There we go. On Father's Day, Sunday, June 16th at 7.30 a.m., uh, the fathers will have a free breakfast served to them in the lower level, Fellowship Hall. Um, there'll be no Sunday school that day, so no Sunday school, but we're going to have breakfast for the fathers and the father figures. So please come out at 730. And for everyone else, you are welcome to eat this breakfast, but only after the dads have eaten. Okay? That's fair? Amen. So put that in your calendars, June 16th at 730. Um, no Sunday school and breakfast for the fathers in the lower level, just like we had for the mothers, amen? Fathers deserve it too, right? Okay, so our very own First Lady J, she has two engagements coming up and two engagements, girl, you busy. On the same day. On the same day. Okay, Lord help, Pastor said. Oh. So on Sunday, June 23rd, first she's going to be at King Solomon at 11 a.m. Uh, she will be speaking for their Women's Day. So if you plan on going, the colors for that event will be all white, okay? So that is going to be on the 23rd at 11. And then a little later on, she's going to be at Guiding Light at 4 p.m. And she's going to be the keynote speaker. Check it out. Keynote speaker. That's our first lady. She's going to be the keynote speaker at Guiding Light for their first fourth Sunday fellowship service. So please come out and support our very busy first lady. Amen? We're so proud of her, all right? Okay, don't forget about Bible class. Bible class is here on Wednesdays. Uh, we have prayer first from 5 to 6. 
then our pastor always teaches us an amazing lesson from six to seven. So please come out to Bible class here on Wednesday evenings. Don't forget about Sunday school. Let's give it up for Sunday school. We've got some great teachers here, great teachers. So come out to Sunday school. Uh, the ladies are here in the sanctuary. The men are downstairs. The children are in First Lady's office. So please come out to Sunday school on Sunday mornings, all right? My quote for today. All right, quote of the day. Self-sabotage is knowing what you need to do and not doing it. So don't forget that, okay? All right, so we are going to do loves and hugs this morning, all right? So take a minute to go across the aisles and hug one or two people, okay? All right, let's get up. Loves and hugs, you got a minute. So go hug someone you haven't hugged this morning. Have a great week. good to see you. It's so good to see you. We praise God for all our visitors. Thank you for visiting here with us at the New Direction Christian Church, 2127 West Garfield. What an honor it is to have you. We know you passed up 100 churches before you got to this one, so we don't take your presence lightly. Freddie, good to see you, my main man right there. Good to see you. Give Freddie a good hand, hand clap. He's a great teacher at MCP. Um, I'm sure he's probably taught one of your kids. Listen, and so we praise God for you. Can we give a hand for our first lady? Can we give God praise for her. Get, listen, let's give, I'm going to let her speak for a moment. She got something to say. Come on here real quick. Hey Amen. Can we give God some praise in this place on this morning? God is good. So happy to see all your beautiful faces on today. Um, I do have some special shout outs, but I'll save those to the end. But I wanted to just get up real quick and talk to you about the New Direction uh, Christian Church cookbook. We're calling it A New Flavor. Can I call it that, Pastor? A New Flavor, right? Because we New Direction, A New Flavor. And I just want you all to know these recipes that people are submitting are amazing. I can't wait. 
And I even been sampling some of the recipes. Where Mother Sharon Evans at? She not here yet? She brought her million dollar pie to me the other day at work and I couldn't even get it home because Vonda Wright, people was eating it. They was, people were cutting slices of it before I could get it to my car. It was so delicious. So we have that recipe going in. We have a rice dressing recipe going in. Y'all ever heard of that? Pastor Gigi knows how to throw down in the kitchen. Pastor Gigi also gave her seafood gumbo. Y'all like seafood gumbo? Mama Morgan submitted her pinto beans and ham hock. Hey. And Pastor submitted his. See, y'all just thought it was the grits. It wasn't the grits. Pastor make a mean scrambled egg, though, I'ma tell you. <laughs> they cheesy, you know, just the right amount of milk to put in. Thank you, Pastor. But he is submitting his grit recipe. And what else did you say, Pastor? I think you gave me a cake recipe? Oh, no, the peanut butter bars. The MPS peanut butter bars. Y'all like that? I submitted my Cajun pasta recipe. So Tracy, you should be happy about that one. Tracy love my Cajun pasta. Grandma, no, I didn't submit no dressing recipe. Grandma Tina submitted a mixed country bean recipe. Y'all ever had a lot of the different beans together? We even have a collard green recipe being submitted by our very own brother, Handy. So listen, I'm telling you, the new flavor of love Christian, New Direction Christian Church cookbook is going to be coming out in the month of June. If you have not submitted your recipe, I am begging you and pleading with you. This is your last opportunity to get it submitted to me. These recipes are amazing. Anybody know how to boil the perfect egg? You see, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you, though, my Auntie Cynthia knows how to boil the perfect egg, and she is going to submit that. So we are really doing this, though, so that we can have something to pass down to our children. Amen? We cannot say we're not doing nothing and doing anything and talk about the next generation, and we're not leaving them with anything to go by. We want to raise good men and women who know how to cook for their families. Amen? so that they don't have to go to McDonald's and Wendy's and Burger King and eat all that processed food. So we want to raise our children the right way. We want to leave them with the script so that they can have something to fall back on. Me, myself, I've already written my own cookbook for my children so that when I'm not here, my girls know what to do for their husbands and their children. Amen. It's on our counter and the recipe box is full of all the things that mama makes for them. So they know one day when I'm 95 and I'm gone home, the Lord gonna bless me to live a good long life, that they can fall back on that recipe, all right? Anybody know how to make a good smothered potato? I know my mama do, she gonna submit that for me. Anybody know how to do a good smothered potato? So all these hands going up, see I tricked off. I did that for a reason. Next week I want y'all a recipe. We even have a recipe template sitting next to Siobhan, and she's gonna give that out after church. So if you need a recipe template, like you know your ingredients, you know the steps, but maybe you need somebody to handwrite it for you, Siobhan and Dominique are gonna be out in the foyer after church. They can sit down with you and jot those things down, and we're gonna make sure that your name is mentioned in a new flavor of love cookbook written by the very own members of New Direction Christian Church. Now, can we give it up for the best pastor in the city? <laughs> Listen, first lady, if they don't know how to boil their own egg, we in trouble. So, touch somebody tell we in trouble. I'm just kidding. Uh, Listen, I want to acknowledge uh, Pastor Goodwin, who is here. Can we give God some praise for 
my friend, our guest, Pastor Goodwin. He is state assembly representative from District 12. He is here along with Ted Chisholm, who is running for Milwaukee County Treasurer. Can we give God praise for Brother Tim Chisholm? Amen, amen, amen. I know my deacons was like, let me, let me make sure I got Lucille on me. Let's, so we, we, we love visitors, but we be watching too. So I appreciate y'all. I, I saw their head on the swivel. C come on, Pastor Goodwin, give us some remarks and then I'll give opportunity for Brother Chisholm as well. Amen. Come on, give God a hand praise. <laughs> Y'all gonna be safe with Ted. That's the, many of you may not know, that is the uh, Milwaukee County District Attorney's son. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Oh, no, um, and he's also, uh, he used to work with the Sheriff's Department. He was over the entire Sheriff's Department um, as the uh, chief um, legislator or whatever. Um, he'll explain that to you. But anyway, I'm so glad to be here at New Direction. Come on, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Millions didn't make it, but you was one of the ones who did. And that's the reason to give God some praise. Amen, I thank God for Pastor Jared. I thank God for his lovely wife, beautiful people. I'll tell y'all a few stories, then I'll talk a little bit about my campaign, then I'll sit down. I'll be out the way. Amen. But I, uh, years ago, I was talking to my cousin. I'm going to tell y'all a story real quick. I was talking to my cousin. We were talking about, this back in 2003, we were talking about, like, the up-and-coming preachers. My cousin is a real uh, preacher enthusiast, and she was saying about this preacher, about that preacher, and then I says, uh, I said, well, what do you think about uh, Pastor Jamal Bryant? She said, he's up-and-coming. So then we talking. She's like, I dare you to call his office. So I said, yeah, I'm going to call his office. So I called his office about probably about 30 minutes later. He called me back on the phone. And when I talked to him, I, he's like, well, where are you going to be at? He's like, I'm, I, I want to meet you and we can talk and rap. And uh, I said, I'm in Memphis. He's like, you know what? I'm going to be there Friday. And I said, okay. He said, meet me at this church. And the church was called New Direction Christian Church. And I, I was going there to meet Jamal. Me and him, we talked for about an hour. We hit it off. But I didn't know that I was going to be connected to the actual pastor of the church, which is Dr. Stacy L. Spencer. Me and him ended up becoming really good friends. He's a mentor, all of that good stuff. But I said that to say this. God has a sense of humor sometimes. I find it funny that I ended, up, I ended up being friends with the pastor of New Direction in Memphis, Tennessee. But then God connected me to the pastor of New Direction Christian Church in Milwaukee. And he's a good friend. So I don't take that lightly that God got me connected to these people. He's been a, a big brother, a good friend, and uh, I've learned a lot from him as well. Amen. And I thank God for him and his wife. Amen. But um, how many of you by show of hands live in uh, these zip codes? I'm going to give you these zip codes. 53218. If you live there, just raise your hand. 53218. Uh, 53222. Uh, 53223. Keep your hand raised. Uh, 53224. And 53225. That's a lot of people in here. Amen. Well, I'm running for state assembly um, in District 12. It was uh, Lakeisha Myers is the cur current uh, legislator, and uh, she's leaving to run for Senate. Um, so that opened up that seat. So I'm going to be running for that seat. I'm the former uh, Milwaukee County supervisor for that particular area. Um, so I'm going to be working on uh, cr fixing the crime, fixing the streets. Amen. I don't know if y'all frustrated with the streets. <laughs> But I'm going to work on fixing these streets. And man, you go in some of these holes, you might end up in Mars somewhere. <laughs> but I'm going to work on fixing the streets. I'm going to make sure that MPS is fully funded and fully staffed. Yeah. Amen. Our children are our future. Man, so I'm going to work on that. So that's just a little bit about me. If you would like to learn more about my campaign, you can go to goodwinforassembly.com. Uh, Amen. And I also want to thank God for my wife being here. She's sitting in the corner. Amen. And I thank God for you, New Direction, for your hospitality. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, New Direction. 
It's a privilege to be here with you this morning. Pastor, thank you so much for your hospitality and the opportunity to speak. Thank you to everybody here for the warm welcome and hospitality this morning. I'm here as a guest in God's house, so I'm not going to deliver a, a lengthy political speech. I just want to introduce myself and share a little bit about my commitment in the long term, not just here and now as a candidate, but as somebody seeking to be a public servant for our community to partner with the members not only of this congregation, but our neighbors, our friends, our community members throughout Milwaukee County. I'm running for the office of Milwaukee County Treasurer in the August 13th primary. That's the same day that my friend Pastor Goodwin will be on the ballot as well. It's a countywide office that's responsible for three key things. Number one is managing Milwaukee County's banking and accounts receivable operations, so internal fiscal administration. N number two is managing the county's investments. And number three is handling property tax collection. And right now, exactly, right? Property taxes are going up and up and up. And we deserve to see some accountability, some transparency, and, and responsiveness in how our taxes are being managed. So my commitment, if I'm elected, and I stand on my experience, as Pastor Goodwin said, I served as chief of staff for former county sheriff Ernell Lucas. Following that, I served as senior administrator for management and finance in our clerk of circuit court's office. And as a candidate for county treasurer, my commitment is this. Let's replace invisibility with access. Let's, let's make sure that our accounts are transparent, that we're being proactive in sharing how your tax dollars are being spent. And when we're handling property tax collection, let's, let's replace indifference with compassion. When we have folks in owner-occupied homes who need some assistance, struggling with tax rates, may fall behind on payments, Let's work proactively, offer manageable payment plans so that we're not through Milwaukee County foreclosing on folks who are in need. Last but not least, Milwaukee County's Treasurer's Office also manages the acquisition of vacant and abandoned properties that are sitting in tax delinquency, actually in jurisdictions outside of the city of Milwaukee that are surrounding our community. So let's do more to make sure that we don't have vacant and abandoned properties just sitting out there for years. Let's get them back into the fabric of our community. Let's create opportunities for first time homeowners to have access to, to invest in those homes and acquire opportunities for growth. So thank you so much for the privilege to be here with you today. I'm here to make a commitment. This won't be the last time you see me. If I'm honored to be elected, I will not only be back here, but I will have an open door in the treasurer's office so that we can help folks throughout Milwaukee County. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give God praise for both of them. Didn't they do a great job? Listen, listen. I think, I think they won a few votes here today. Listen. So I'm talking about it. Them property taxes ridiculous when they want to. You heard her. You heard her. Don't play with Bridget. <laughs> Don't play with Bridget. Listen, we praise God for you. New direction. It's good to see you. I missed, I missed y'all last week. Touch your neighbor. Tell them I missed you last week. I know y'all was on vacation last week. I get it. I get it. Listen, next, this, um, this Thursday, this Thursday, June 6th at 6.30, I need your help, New Direction, at the Life Center um, where Bishop Makai Young is the pastor. The address is 8265 West Brown Deer Road where that old Target used to be. He's in that strip mall. The Life Center, 8265 West Brown Deer Road, 6.30. June 6th, that's Thursday. We will not be having Bible class. Instead, just meet us there. I don't want to exhaust you this week. Instead of Bible class, meet us there for the Boost Fellowship service. Bishop Makai Young is also um, the pastor over um, the church in Ni the Kojic Church in Nigeria. And this service is a, a fundraiser to help him um, help the needs of the people in Nigeria. Let's say amen for Bishop Young. Amen. I am the lecturer on that night, and Bishop uh, 
Daryl Hines, who is a general board member, is the uh, preacher. So I want you to come out and you will be blessed. Touch your neighbor, tell them we got to go, we got to go. We will be blessed. Um, they are wearing African attire for this occasion. So I want you to pull up in your best dashiki, amen, and come and represent uh, for the people, amen. So again, we praise God for you. Want to just inform you that on the uh, first Sunday of August, that's when we'll be having our annual uh, church picnic, okay? So make sure you're in town for that. The first Sunday, of course, we'll have the ribs and the fish and um, you name it, uh, we're going to have it. Amen? I want you to be there for that and let us support our own first lady as she is going to preach uh, two amazing words. Amen? We can't wait to hear from you. She is some preacher. She is some woman of God, and we praise God for her. Amen? And then um, wanna, I want to thank you all for joining me at Corinth a Missionary Baptist Church. W when was that? Friday night? Friday. Give God some praise. We had a great time in the Lord. I appreciate you all helping me celebrate his sweet 16 uh, pastoral anniversary. Amen. And then just by way of announcements, the last, the last Saturday in July, we are going to have a tribute service um, to honor um, the founding pastor of this church and building. Amen. Bishop Betty Hayes. Let's give God some praise. It's the last Saturday of July. Um, we'll be sharing details with that, um, but we're definitely going to be, it's going to be a great time in the Lord. You don't want to miss it. Uh, Saturday, 6 p.m. Again, 727-24. Amen. Let's give God some praise as we worship him in our giving. Let's give God some praise for that. This is an opportunity that we give God our best as he's given us his best in his son, Jesus Christ. As you know, we are always feeding the homeless through our missionaries. Where are our missionaries at? Wave your hand, missionaries. Thank you all for leading our efforts and cooking the food for the homeless, purchasing the food for the homeless, and even serving them. We praise God for you. Not only that, but we are meeting the needs of our own membership for when you all fall in need. And then we are also are trying to be debt free in three and i believe we're gonna be through in two amen because of your generosity and your obedience so thank you in advance on givelify on the givelify app it's new direction christian church on the cash app it's dollar sign ndcc milwaukee if you need the credit card machine see sister bracy to my left if you need an envelope just slip up your hand we'll come around to you and to everyone else, stand if you will. You are under the directions of our ushers as you come from the rear. Let's give God our best, asking for offering of $25. $25 on top of your gift this morning as we make a push on the first Sunday of the month. Amen.
God, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for those that were able to give and those that were not able to give. Our God, I pray that you continue to bless them. And today, you got to give stuff away. In Jesus' name, amen. Does anybody want to thank God for being a savior, for being the king, for being the great I am? He is worthy of the praise. Do me a favor, get something on your lips and begin to speak well of his goodness all over the room. Father, we bless you. We honor your sweet name. There's nobody like you nowhere. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody like you. You're the great I am. You're an awesome wonder. You're the healer. For healing me, 
That's why I bless you. Everybody say yeah. There's no one. Now open up your mouth and give her glory today. Now is the time. Now is the time for the real worshiper to stand up. You've been through hell and high waters. But look at you today. You're still standing here. You're still standing here. You're still standing here. And that's why I praise you. Hey, hey. You saved me. You saved me. You healed me. You healed me. You filled me. You kept 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 me. Parade you because you took my tears of sorrow you and turned up the tears of joy. You kept me, you kept me, you kept me. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. He deserves it, he deserves it. 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 He deserves it. There's nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Open up your mouth and give God glory. I dare you give God a nobody greater than praise. I dare you give God a nobody greater than praise. He's greater than your problems, greater than your issues, greater than your circumstance. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Nobody greater. Nobody. Greater, nobody 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 greater, nobody. Nobody, 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 nobody can heal, nobody can say, nobody, 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 greater, 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 greater. Greater, 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 
greater, greater, greater, greater, greater, greater, greater, greater, greater, greater, nobody, nobody, greater, nobody, greater, nobody, greater, nobody, nobody, greater, nobody, greater, Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater. Nobody great, nobody great, nobody, hey, hey, nobody greater, let's go, nobody greater, 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 oh greater, 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 nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Nobody can heal. Nobody can heal. I hear healing in the room. Nobody can heal. He's bigger than your cancer. Nobody can heal. He's bigger than your tumor. Nobody can heal. He's bigger than your migraine. Nobody can heal. Nobody. 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 There is a name. That's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee has got to bow. And at the name of Jesus, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ, he is the Lord. He's the great I am. He's the way in. He's the way over. He's the way through. Nobody, 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 nobody.
know somebody said, what's going on here? But you remember Shaq Rack, Meshach, and the Bendigo. And what happened when they were thrown into the fire? And then Jeremiah said, it's like fire shot up in my bone. What am I saying? If you step into the fire, something's gonna happen. The fire might hurt, but it cleanses. To God be the Come on, say to For all the things he's done, 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 for all the things, 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 for all the things. For all the things, every way, every way, every turn, every door, every healing, all the things, everything, 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 everything should have been there, sleeping in, in my grave, but you made, oh death behave, everything, everything that the devil tried to steal everything that the devil tried it wouldn't work no weapon that's born against me shall prosper i'm more than a conqueror the weapon may fall but it won't work it won't work it won't work it won't work it won't work
Clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for the Father. Clap your hands for the Holy Ghost. Can we give God a big hand clap of praise for our choir, our praise team, our musicians? Hallelujah. We praise God for you. Once again, to Pastor Goodwin, it's an honor to have you, First Lady Goodwin. What a blessing. Can we give them a hand one more time? To the future treasurer, let's give God some praise for him one more time. Didn't he bless us? May God bless you. And to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, while you're standing, why don't we praise God for our preachers? Aren't they a blessing? All of them, we praise God for you. I love 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 you, I love you, Tyra. Love you, love you. We gonna be ordaining Jay in August too. I don't know if he's around here. Where's Jay at? We gonna be ordaining him. As a preacher in the Lord's church. Let's give God some praise for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited for him. For him. him and his new boo, amen. Him and Kendrick up there dying up there. We happy for them. Romans 7, Romans 7, Romans 7, verse 15. Romans 7, verse 15 through 25. Familiar passage to a lot of Sunday school goers, as Bible readers. Once again, Romans 7, 15 and 25. If you're watching virtually, thank you for tuning in. Um, what an honor it is to have you share this post tag, a friend, a family member, a co-worker. We want to spread the gospel even virtually. Texas, once again, Romans 7, 15 and 25. In this slender slice of scripture. Paul is in a fight with his flesh. So I pray to help someone that may be in the same fight. Paul says, for I do not understand my own actions. This is ESV. For I do not do what I want. But I do the very thing that I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want to do is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God, in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grab your neighbor and tell them God wants to give you a little strength for your struggle. You may be seated. God wants to give you a little strength for your struggle. Paul, like many of us, feels pulled in two different directions. He says, I say I'm going to act one way 
in my mind, but my body can't pull it off. Paul says, I say I'm going to do one thing, but when the time comes, I do another. The Message Bible puts it this way. My flesh keeps sabotaging my good intentions. It's like I can't help myself. My mind is writing checks that my body can't cash. Wish I had some help in this place. Paul says, I plan to do one thing, but my flesh refuses to cooperate. Paul says, I've got good ideas, but it is my execution that I'm having trouble with. Paul shouts in the text, oh, what a wretched man am I. Paul admits to us this morning that the struggle is real. Grab your neighbor, tell him the struggle is real. But so is my God. Paul is literally at war with himself. It's a battle between his faith and his flesh. The Bible declares that uh, the spirit is willing, but somebody help me, the flesh is weak. In our text, we are dealing with not World War III, but World War Me. It's a civil war for the soul. Paul says, it's as if my mind is not mine. Paul says, my mind ain't minding me. How do I make my mind mine? When I want to ponder, my mind wants to wander. When I want to pray, my mind wants to stray. Wish I had some help in this place. Have you ever been there where you felt like you were a walking contradiction, a bipolar believer shouting in church one minute but talking crazy the next minute? You know, there are some people who speak in tongues but won't speak to you. Wish I had some help in here. You remember what the old folks used to sing? When I got saved, they said, I looked at my hands and they looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. But the truth is, church, if you don't renew your mind, your new feet will take you to the same place your old feet took you. Wish I had some help in this place. If you don't renew your mind, your new hands will do the same things your old hands used to do. If you don't renew your minds, your new eyes will look at, Lord have mercy, the same things your old eyes used to look at. Grab your neighbor, tell him you need to renew your mind. Now shout out to God and say, Lord, renew my mind. I can't hear nobody shout, Lord, renew my mind. Paul put it this way, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You don't need new body parts, you just need a new mind. You don't need new limbs, you just need a new mind, a new perspective, a new viewpoint, new ideas, new thoughts, new wisdom, new views, new outlook, new revelation, a new angle, a new direction, new vision. Somebody shout, Lord, renew my mind. In our text church, if you've never heard me, give me 15 more minutes, we'll be out of here. Uh, in our text church, Paul is despairing because he's dealing with the reality of duality. His flesh and God's spirit are in a battle for soul control. The reality of his carnality has Paul despairing in chapter 7. But one of the greatest things about Romans chapter 7, church, is that it leads to Romans chapter 8. Lord have mercy. In Romans chapter 8, they got some better scriptures simply. Uh, for example, therefore, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. That's a bit more encouraging. In Romans chapter 8, it says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared, Lord have mercy, with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans chapter 8 is a little more encouraging. It says, If God be for us, 
us through, who can be against us? Romans chapter 8 is a little more encouraging. He simply says, we are more than conquerors. Romans chapter 8, a little more encouraging for it says, for I'm not persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor creature nor have mercy nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God. Romans 8 is a little more encouraging. It simply says and we know all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 7 Paul is hopeless. Romans chapter 8 he's hopeful. Romans chapter 7 he's paralyzed. Romans chapter 8 he's powerful. Romans chapter 7 he's failed and feeble and failing. But Romans chapter 8 he's firm in his faith. Romans chapter 7 he's incompetent and incapable. Romans chapter 8 he's confident and content. And Romans chapter 7 he's struggling on following the rules. And Romans chapter 8 he looks at the ruler. Lord have mercy. Grab your neighbor. Just tell him just shift your focus. Just shift your focus. Shout I will look up unto the hills from whence cometh my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. When you can find encouragement by looking at yourself, just look unto God. Lord, have mercy. Touch your neighbor. Tell him, I'm looking to him. That's where all of my help comes from. That's where grace comes from. That's where mercy comes from. That's where providence comes from. That's where love comes from. That's where peace comes from. That's where joy comes from. I'm looking at him. You may be stuck in chapter 7. But keep on living, keep on believing. Chapter 8 is coming. God's got a better chapter after this one. Grab your neighbor, encourage him one time. Tell him God's got a better chapter after this one. You remember that story of Job? It has 42 chapters. And I cried with Job in chapter 1 when he lost his children. And I got mad at his wife in chapter 2 when his wife said, curse your God and die. And I was angry at Job's friends in chapter 3 when they tried to blame all of his problems on himself. And I worshiped with Job in chapter 13 when he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And I lifted up my hands in Job chapter 19 when he said, Lord, have mercy, when he was going through what he was going through, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and on the latter day I shall stand on the end of the earth. I shouted with Job, chapter 38, waiting on God's response to his question. But when you get to Job, chapter 42, I wish I had some help in this place, he gets double for his trouble. If you can just hang on in there, if you just don't give up, if you don't throw in the towel, if you don't quit now, just keep the faith. God will give you double for your trouble. I wish I had somebody here that believes by faith that he'll give you more than before. That if you just keep the faith, if you just keep your trust in God, if you can keep your praise, if you can keep God first, if you can keep your worship, God's got greater later. Grab two people. Just tell them, hang on in there. God's got greater later. Let them know this ain't the last page. The best of your story has not yet been told. The good news, church. Although Paul is down in the dumps of despair when he looks at his mindset and his actions, which are contradictory, it's good news because I want you to know Jesus cleans all of the fish he catches. Lord have mercy. I hope that encouraged you like it encouraged me. Let me say that one more time. Jesus cleans all of the fish he catches. I don't know about you, but you probably bought your own fish. You probably caught your own fish. Lord have mercy. But whether you bought it or caught it by yourself, the truth is the fish didn't clean itself. That's what I need you to know. Cleaning the fish is God's job. Grab your neighbor. Tell him God is going 
gonna clean you up. God is gonna fix it for you. You don't have to depend on yourself. That's why David wrote Psalms 51, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Cleanse me thoroughly from my sin. Cleanse me and wash me from my iniquities. Blot out my transgressions. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. I wish I had somebody could just give God praise and just say, Lord, clean me up. Create in me. I can't hear nobody. Shout, create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. I don't know about you, but I need to be purified. I need to be cleansed. I still got some issues. I still got flaws. I still make mistakes. I still got some stinking thinking. I still complain too much. I still worry too much. I still get too anxious. I still got some fears. I still got some doubts. I still got some concerns. But is there anybody here that can just shout out to God and say, create in me a clean heart, renew in me a right spirit. Shout out to God and say, he cleans all the fish he catches because he bought you and he caught you and he gonna clean you. I need you to know, church, he loves you the way you are. But he loves you too much to leave you the way you are. Lord have mercy. Let me run it by you one more time. He loves you the way you are. But he loves you too much to leave you the way you are. Grab one more person. Tell him he's going to get you clean. C.S. Lewis writes, No one knows how bad they are until they try to be good. And so, in Romans chapter 7, it's a sad commentary, but get this church, if you wallow, you can't follow. You cannot wallow in your sin. You cannot wallow in your sorrow. You cannot wallow in your suffering. You cannot wallow in your sadness, feeling sorry for yourself. Because if you wallow, you can't follow. Let me try to encourage you real quick. See, the fact of the matter is, if there is a battle going on inside of you, Lord have mercy, it should encourage you all by itself because it's evidence, it's proof that you're saved. Because the reality is, church, if there was not a battle going on inside of you, if there was not a fight for, Lord have mercy, for your faith and a fight for your salvation, you would just do what you wanted to do and there would be no struggle. There would be no fight at all. There would be no battle. You would just do what you wanted to do with no remorse, with no shame, with no regret, with no guilt, with no conviction, with no sorrow, with no sadness, with no repentance, with no bad feelings. And the fact that there is struggle is proof that you're saved. I need you to grab two people, tell them you saved, you're redeemed, you're born again because you are still a soldier in the army of the Lord. You are still wrestling with this issue. You are still struggling with your fight, with your addiction, with your demon, with your issues, with your problem. Grab your neighbor, tell them you better trust them. You better keep praying. You better keep praising. You better keep worshiping the struggle is real but so is my god he still got his hands on you grab somebody tell him he still got his hands on you. i can't hear nobody grab somebody tell him he still got his hands on you i don't know about you but i put it all in his hands my issues my problem my finances my fitness my children my family my future i put it all in his hands somebody say this and that this 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 and that i put it all in his hands i'm closing when i tell you how to put it in his hands 
teach my preachers what you gotta do when it comes to funerals is you gotta memorize the committal. When you give the body back to the Lord, you gotta memorize the committal. It simply says, for as much as it has pleased the Almighty God in His wise providence to take out of this world unto Himself the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit His body back to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. That is when we commit the body of His children back to Him. But Jesus was so awesome as a preacher, He committed Himself on the cross. Lord have mercy. He did His own committal. I wish I had some help in this place. Father, I commit my spirit back to you. I dare you commit yourself to God even now. Lord, I commit my spirit. I commit my future. I commit my mind. I commit my heart. I commit my soul. I commit my marriage. I commit my relationship. I commit my nieces. I commit my nephews. I commit my grandchildren. I wish I had somebody. I commit my dreams. I commit my aspirations. I commit my goals. I commit them all to you. Somebody shout, you better get committed. You better get committed into the hands. I commit my life. I commit my all. I put it all in his hands. Somebody battling with your past. You got to commit your past to the Lord. Your past mistakes. Your past regrets. Your past shame. Your past issues. Your past failures. Your past insecurities. Your past trauma. Your past thoughts. Your past actions. Your past humiliation. I dare you commit it to the Lord, make a public pledge, make a public proclamation. Somebody said, I commit my past to you. I commit my issues to you. And I give you glory for the deliverance that's coming, for the healing that's coming, for the redemption that's coming, for the restoration that's coming, for the wholeness that's coming, for the joy that's coming, for the peace that's coming. You got the victory. Not because of anything you did, but because of what he did on Calvary. Somebody shout, he died for me. He rose for me. And you got victory in the cross. I got two questions. I thought it was one, but I thought two questions. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood, a praise goes right here, a hallelujah goes right here, a wave offering goes right here, clap hands goes right here, lift up your hand goes right here, a thank you goes right here, somebody give them glory, give them the fruit of your lips, say I love you, say I adore you, say I magnify your holy name, thank you, hallelujah, for your word, I can't hear nobody. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I was talking to an old man yesterday about his golf score. And he said, listen, don't worry about my scores. I'm just out here. He said, at my age, I'm just happy to be stuck in air. He cracked me up with that. But is there anybody here like that old man that's just happy to be sucking air? You don't deserve to be here. I wish I had somebody here. He was preaching to me because in my mind I heard that everything that has breath, let him hear your praise. Let him hear your exaltation. Let him hear you glorify his name. Because I just know and believe by faith if you honor his name, if you pray in his name, if you magnify his name, he'll put something in your name, a house in your name, a car in your name, land in your name, property in your name, a business in your name. If you just put God first, my Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto you. Grab somebody, tell them you got strength for your struggle. Keep on pushing, keep on believing, keep on seeking his faith. There's greater after this. There's joy after this. Somebody just say thank you. Glorify 
his name. Magnify his name. Lord, I love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we honor you. Hallelujah. Everyone standing. Everyone standing. Hallelujah. There may be someone here that does not know Jesus the Christ as the pardon of your sins. This is your opportunity. There is no strength for your struggle without accepting Jesus as your savior and substitute and sacrifice for your sin. Will there be one? Life is too short. The judgment is too dreadful. Hell is too real. Death is too certain. Accept Christ before it's too late. Just touch your neighbor, just ask him, are you saved? Do you know him? Have you tried him? Maybe you're saved, you just need a church home. Ask him, do you have a church home? A place to work out your soul's salvation with fear and trembling. Don't leave here unsaved. Don't leave here unsure about where you will spend eternity. Look at your neighbor one more time. Witness for the first time today. Tell him, do you know him? Have you tried him? For yourself. Maybe there is someone watching virtually and you don't know him. Just type, I need you, Lord. I need a church home. I love you, Lord. I want to be saved. I bet, and I know, someone before me is going to reach you out to you and have prayer with you so you can be saved, so you can be redeemed. Let's give God some praise in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. While you're standing, although we see no one has come, there is still room at the cross let us prepare for the Lord's supper you can remain standing ask our deacons to make ready let us pause for prayer gracious and eternal father we say thank you for your sacrifice thank you for the blood that you shed for the body that you gave you died in our place you didn't merely die for us, but you died as us. We thank you, Lord, for being a ram in the bush on our behalf. Praying, Father, that you take out any bitterness, any hate, any jealousy, any envy. Not if, Lord, but when you find something in us that don't belong, remove it right now in the name of Jesus. For you told us in your word that if we drink of the cup of salvation and eat of the bread of life with unforgiveness in our hearts, that we'll be eating and drinking damnation to our souls. So create in us a clean heart even now. Renew in us a right spirit even now. You told us in your word, do this in remembrance of you. And we remember you now for being our savior our healer and our redeemer. Thank you, Lord, for saving our souls. Thank you, Lord, for the victory we have through your precious son, Jesus Christ, in the mighty, matchless, majestic name of Jesus. Everyone said amen and amen. Ask that you come from the rear at this time. Deacon Brown, as usual, he's gonna serve our pulpit staff, my ministers, musicians, the praise team. Deacon Bracey, as usual, is going to serve our missionaries, our mothers who have trouble. It is our custom that if you are not saved, that you do not partake in this solemn, sacred occasion because you cannot remember who you do not know.
has everyone been served? Yeah, if you if you need a if you need some, the bread of life, just lift up your hand. If you need if you need some assistance, lift up your hand. If you need some help, need some help opening it, just lift up your hand. We're gonna help you. Like everyone has been served. Let us stand from where you are so we can commune together. Let's hold up the bread. Repeat after me. This is the bread of life, which represents, symbolizes the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was broken for us. And there is a blessing in the breaking. Let us see together. Someone say thank you for the bread. I'm all right over here. You all right? All right. <laughs> Let us lift up the cup of salvation. Somebody just say thank you for the blood. Repeat after me. This is the fruit of the vine, which symbolizes, represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ that was shed for our sins. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Our deacons will come around, grab your cups from you. Wherever we go, we're going to show out. <laughs> and we had a good time in the Lord on Friday night. Thank y'all for joining us at the Corinth Baptist Church. We still in service, everybody. Thank y'all for joining us at Corinth Baptist Church. Don't forget to join us this Thursday at the Life Center. That's on uh, Brown Deer, 92nd and 91st and Brown Deer. So we hope to see you there. I just got to give a quick few shout outs. First shout out goes to RJ. Where you at, RJ? That's my godson. He is a soccer, uh, a great soccer player. He showed, he had two soccer games yesterday. The second game he showed up to, let me just let y'all know, as soon as he got on the field, he scored. Okay? RJ don't play no games. He got some great parents that have him in a lot of things, and um, Seven is a cheerleader, and I'm just so proud of my godchildren back there. Wave your hand. Amen. My, listen, I got to shout out Danny. Where you at, Danny? Is she up here? All right, so, but Danny had a dance recital yesterday and she did amazing. Listen, we are so proud of her. She showed out, she was a tap dancer. Then she did some um, hip hop dancing. She did an amazing job. I gotta tell Danny, I used to be in tap school. Vonda, you know I can tap dance? Chef Flow Step. <laughs> anyway. I'm proud of all of our kids, though, for all they are doing. To all of the uh, scholars, all of the students, stand up right now so that we can give you guys an amazing round of applause for finishing out a wonderful school year. We are going to celebrate them again, but I'm just so proud of these kids. A lot of the kids I know, they go to MCP, and we're almost done this week. So if you think I shouted today, hey, Pastor Brown, I'm going to really need that shout music come Sunday. Hey. I ain't, I'm not even going to wear no heels on Sunday. I'm just going to shout the whole service. Because Thursday at noon, 
I need Pastor Brown to come to church, school with me on Thursday. Where all the teachers at? Can we just give God some praise that we made it another year? Hey! Hey, if you, don't, if you ain't no teacher, you don't know what we praise God for. Hey! <laughs> Listen! Thank you, Lord. I love my kids. Let me tell y'all, I love my kids. Let me tell you, I love my kids. But when I give them back on Thursday, listen, I'm going to have a new shout in my spirit. Because this K4 teacher is tired. Do you hear me? I need all of y'all to be praying for us as we go to the zoo tomorrow. That I come back with all 26 of them. <laughs> Pray for you. Anybody, any chaperones? Anybody free tomorrow? Nobody hand went up for that. So anyway, shout out to all of the scholars though. And don't forget to join us this Saturday for the Women's Fellowship at 11 a.m. It will be downstairs, 11 a.m. We're going to have an amazing, amazing lunch in for you all prepared. We have somebody special coming to cater for us. Kelly is going to be speaking on mental health. We're going to be talking about physical health and spiritual health. So this is our health and wellness fair right here. So join us. Christina is also going to be vending on Saturday, on Saturday. So make sure to bring some money with you. Bring your wallets. We're going to have some shopping and we're going to have some good old fun. Amen. If anybody still wants to get on the wait list, Vanessa and Sasha are free today. And we are actually moving some women up today. We had about three or four seats open up from people uh, canceling. So make sure to see them today to get on the wait list. We cannot wait for the year 10. To God be the glory. Woman in the Mirror Conference. Our pastor is going to have a powerful word for us on Friday night. And on Saturday, we're doing an all blackout lunch in with Lady Camille Monk. We will be having a book signing on Friday night and Saturday. So don't forget to join us October 4th and 5th. Amen. Stand to your feet. Grab hands with your neighbor. And don't forget to submit those recipes. Amen. Thank you to the band and the praise team and the choir today. Bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, oh God, for being so good. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, oh God. We thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that you paid on Calvary's cross, Father God. We thank you that your blood still has power. We thank, thank you that your blood still flows, oh Father God. We thank you, Jesus, that there is still power in your name. Oh God, just please protect our babies as they go out this summer, oh God. Keep them safe and sound, Father God. Touch our city as a whole, Father. We speak against violence of any sort, oh God. Bless our church right now in Jesus' name. Unite us, oh God. Father God, unite us as one, Father. We speak against the vision, oh God. Uh, fill up our pastor right now, Father God, of everything that he poured out on today. Father God, just fill him back up. Continue to allow him to lead, oh God, and allow us to follow. God, we thank you, Father God for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for being so good and so kind. Somebody shout glory to your name on today, Father God. Shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We praise your name. Give us traveling grace as we travel to and fro and bring us back here safely until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and thank you, God. Hug three people, tell them I love you, and you can't do nothing about it. And thank you for joining us online today.